everybody. I am extremely honored and privileged to be invited for this noble call. I'm uh, shit scared, but I'll be <laughs> uh, This is much worse than standing in Shifa Hospital and receiving the um, I'm, um, I, I want to pay tribute to this theater uh, as a cradle of resistance against colonialism. And I want to pay tribute to the, the actors and the writers who are maybe the most important energies of resistance that we have. The songs, the poems, the stories, the plays, all that is in the human heart that can be expressed much better than through numbers and cold political terms. So I suggest another round of applause for the actors. Three of the kids are killed. The twin 
sisters and brothers come to Shifa. I attend to Hanadi together with the other doctors in Shifa Hospital. She has a severe brain injury. She's put on a ventilator. And uh, we doubt that she will survive. There is a ceasefire within eight days of bombing. Two days later, I travel around in Gaza City to see the sites from where our patients were coming. I come to the street of the Azam and the Abu Sur family. It's totally rubbish. It's like, like it looks when, when the Israeli army has bombed. It looks like Hiroshima. Totally sort of devastated. Rubble filling the streets. Kids running around. I see three small chaps sitting opposite the street of the Abu Sur family house. They're having two toys, a rubber car and a motor a gun. And I ask them what they're doing, what they are discussing. And they say, we are discussing how we can better hide our toys for the next attack. Because we didn't hide it enough, so we only have two toys left, the car and the water gun. Three young boys, four, five, and seven years old. The Assam clan head comes over to me and he says, Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Mas, Kif Halak. I greet him in the little Arabic I know. He is well dressed, he's clean, he has his little white kalot on the head. And he takes me to uh, the two buildings of the Assam family and the Abusur family. We go through it, he shows me the sleeping room, the bedroom of the kids that were injured and killed. And he says, thanks to God, Alhamdulillah, we managed to get out all, all our family members and the kids, only some minor injuries. But unfortunately, the Abusur family got severely uh, hit and, and lost so many members. They set some plastic chairs in the street among the rubble, wiped away some of the stones from the houses. Brightly uh, violet plastic chairs, and they make tea. And we sit down in a typical fashion of Palestinian hospitality, in a little circle, some men, some women, and the children playing around. And we talk. We have an elevated discussion about the world situation and about the resistance and the repetitious bombing. I leave and I come back the next day and uh, to my surprise there is a banner across the street between the two rows of bombed buildings with uh, big, big letters in Arabic and a picture of the bombed house. And I meet the Assam family head again and I ask him why, why this banner? Has there been somebody from the government, from the information department, putting up the banner because they think that there will be this is from the international media? And he says, no, I decided to make the banner because we need to show our strength. So I ordered my sons to go to the print shop and make this banner to show the world that we will never give up. And I ask him, can you translate it to me? And he says, yes. It says in big Arabic letters, Sumud. And for those of you who know Arabic, sumud means steadfastness. It's a virtue. It's a quality. It's a life-long activity of the Palestinian people. It is not to give up. It is to sustain 70 years of occupation and military rule. It is to sustain an apartheid system that is dividing them along lines of race instead of accepting both people as equal. It is to sustain these repetitious bombardments. It is to sustain eight years of starvation, not only of food, but of school books and pencils, of uh, tiles and window panes and building material, and freedom. Freedom to travel, freedom to speak up, freedom to <coughs> join alliances with other people. So what does the banner read, I ask him? He says it reads, despite siege, bombing, and occupation, we stand tall, and we will never give up our land. And I say, so for who is the banner? And he says, it's for us. But I thought yesterday that your questions were important, and I wanted to make sure that if any other foreigner came around and saw us, I wanted them to share with us our resistance, not our pity, or strength, not our weakness, 
and our determination to stand strong in Gaza and never ever give up the fight against the occupation and Israeli Zionist colonization of Palestine. And I think that deserves an applause because this is a true have been taken hostage of the Israeli government, of the Israeli propaganda machinery, the Hashbara, of the Zionist political movement, which is turning everything upside down. Terrorist in Gaza means a Palestinian resistance fighter. Whereas to me, terrorist in Gaza means an Israeli army bombing mercilessly civilians, killing 551 Palestinian children only during the last attack. To me, attack means when an occupier is bombing an occupied people. In the world today, attack means that Palestinians are shooting rockets to defend their civilians. So attack means defense, and defense means attack. And terror means the right to resist occupation, and protection of human rights, protection of freedom and democracy, means the right to oppress another people. So we need to take back the words. We need to tell the truth. And to do that, we need more than ever the arts, the actors, the poets, the writers, the painters, the musicians. And we need the good alliances between good Jews and good Palestinians who join together in a common cause to resist colonization and oppression and the occupation of Palestine. And I will mention to the end of my little talk two names. Max Blumenthal, the brave Ashkenazi Jew from the United States, a brilliant journalist, who has said, I will not subscribe to the Zionist project. I do not support the occupation of Palestine. On the contrary, I will use all my energy to uncover, to take back the words, and to tell the truth. It's written one book, which is called Goliath, on the situation, the right-wing movement, the fascist development in Israel. And he's written a second book right now about the last attack on Gaza. He's written the foreword in my book, Night in Gaza, which we released in English uh, a week ago in London and which we are selling here in <coughs> He is one of these many voices who take back, he takes back the words, he tells the truth, and he goes in to, to do that with his Jewish voice, to show the world that indeed, Judaism and Zionism are not two similar things. And he does that in order to show that there is a huge potential for a peaceful alliance between Palestinians and Jews, and in particular the young generation, in order to get an end to the occupation of Palestine and to the unjust treatment of the Palestinian people. This is not a difficult conflict. This is a difficult occupation. And it has lasted too long, and it's all our responsibility to see an end to this unjust occupation of Palestine. The second name is Mohamed Umar, a young Palestinian journalist living in Rafah in southern Gaza. He has written the postscript in my book. He's a good friend of mine. He says every night as a morning, we will not give up. There will be a morning. There will be a better time for the Palestinian people. And with that comes a better time for the Israeli people. Because no people who is occupying another people will ever have peace and security until that occupation is ended. And there is justice, not only peace, but peace with justice. So I think that the stories are the most important things to tell. Should we tell her? Should we not tell her? I think we should tell the truth. I think we should take responsibility, each one of us, to be knowledgeable about the situation in the world, not only in in Palestine, but also in other parts of the world, less fortunate than our rich part. We have a saying in Norwegian that you can, you can drown in the butter eye. You know the butter eye on the porridge? It can get so big that you're drowning in it. And we are risking now, because of our wealth and our good lives, to drown in our own butter eyes. That's a bad, bad, bad death, I can tell you. <laughs> to be ignorant, to be egoistic, to be without the world outlook, to be without solidarity, it is uh, a very uh, 
unlikely death, and it is a miserable death. So let's stand up, let's be strong, let us show solidarity, let's take back the words, and let, con let us continue to tell the truth. And uh, with that, I hope that the Irish people with, will increase their solidarity, will, will force your government to uh, engage in the boycott, divestment and sanction of Israel, which is a peaceful means to end the occupation of Palestine. Gaza teaches life, Palestine teaches life. I end with an Arab slogan that I learned by, uh, from uh, Yasser Arafat, uh, Obama in Beirut in 1982. And the slogan was, Saurara Thawra Hatta Nasser, it, we, it means revolution will have victory in the end. We have uh, rephrased it a bit and we say Gaza, Gaza, Hatta Nasser. Gaza will have victory and the Palestinian people will be free, inshallah. Thank you very much. Shukran Jasir.